everyone, Oliver Drake here, training and show manager at Hike for Gym. What to make sure today is the latest addition to our NVR family. This is our new 77 series uh, NVR. Now, if you look at the product code below, you'll notice that this NVR, it says it says it's said DS77. Uh, however, you'll notice it says NX in the middle. Now, if it just said N, that would be it's conventional NVR. The fact it says NX, the X indicates it's got deep learning technology. So it's that AI that's involved. So this is an NVR with AccuSense. So the fact it's got our AccuSense technology in there means it can do false alarm reduction. Therefore, only triggering it for human and or vehicles, depending on what we configure the events to. Now, in addition to be able to do the false alarm reduction in regards to line crossings, intrusion detections, it also means we can do quick target searching. So even if you haven't got it configured for line crossing or intrusion detection, rather than just trying to rewind footage and look through uh, it could be hours and hours of footage. You can simply go into the uh, NVR itself and say, show me whenever a human body or a vehicle was seen in the scene, regardless of any events actually configured. Now, on this particular model, we can do up to uh, four channels at two megapixel uh, for false alarm reduction. And we can do one channel at, for facial recognition at eight megapixels. That's half 4K resolution. However, I do need to point out that you can only have one feature enabled at any one time. So you either have one channel, facial recognition, or you do the four channels with false alarm reduction. You cannot do uh, both at the same time. So you need to pick and choose what you want this uh, equipment to do. So what we'll do, let's pop up in the box and take a look and see what it looks like inside. Uh, so here it is uh, out of the box. Uh, now when you do open the main box inside, you do get a smaller uh, box as well that contains uh, some accessories for you to use. You've obviously got your uh, power cable to use. Uh, you also get a USB mouse, uh, Ethernet cable to connect it to the network, uh, a multitude of different cables to connect up to the uh, hard drives inside the NVR, remote control, and then we do actually supply as well uh, some little brackets that can go either side at the front of this device here, uh, so this can be uh, rack mounted inside a comms cabinet. Uh, should you wish. So let's take a look at the rear and see what this actually looks like and what sort of connections we get on the back. So here we can see you've got your main power uh, power switch on and off there. It's got your various alarm inputs and outputs. Uh, it's got a USB to connect obviously your mouse to. Uh, two HDMI ports on the back so you can get to two monitors simultaneously. There's also a VGA port as well so you do not want to use the HDMI. And this particular model here has two LAN ports. So you've got one local area network port, which would connect to the, ideally to the customer's main local area network, to their router or to their switch. And then you've got a second LAN port. That one there is what would go off to a PoE switch, a power over ethernet switch. So your uh, IP cameras will be connected to the PoE switch and that switch will get routed back to this LAN port here. This other LAN port goes back to the customer's network. Now we do do a version that has the built-in uh, PoE switch uh, on the back. And I've got one right here just to uh, show you. So again, from the front, it looks exactly the same. No major differences there. Uh, on the back, there's just a few differences, as you'll see. So on the back of this one here, this one's got the 16-port PoE. So these are the ports that you would connect your IP cameras to. So maximum 16-port uh, 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 PoE. You've then got your one LAN port, which goes back to the customer's main local area network, USB out, two HDMI ports there, as well as a VJ port, and again, your alarm inputs and outputs. So again, if I just put these next to each other, you'll see that the differences are fairly subtle, uh, but again, the majority of the features are exactly the same. One's got built-in PoE, one's just got the two separate uh, LAN ports itself. So what we'll do, let's get one of these fired up, we'll get it plugged in, get some cameras uh, added to it, and we'll just see how we set it up and uh, how this actually works. So here we go, uh, we're now logged into the actual uh, front of the NVR. And as you can see, I've got two cameras currently uh, added into this NVR. Uh, on the left hand side, I've got a conventional IP camera and on the right hand side, I've got an AccuSense uh, IP camera. So uh, the AccuSense IP camera, uh, which got to the right hand side, obviously has the false alarm uh, reduction technology in there and able to do classification of target tubing and or vehicle. The conventional IP camera on the left hand side uh, does not have that feature, therefore it can't classify the target, nor does it have false alarm 
uh, reduction. Therefore, uh, usually that will activate a line crossing trajectory based on uh, any sort of motion or movement within the scene. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is going to go up to a smart analyst here at the uh, top. And then on the left hand side, on this AccuSense NVR, I'm going to go to uh, engine settings. And as we can see, it's currently set for perimeter protection. As I mentioned, it does have the facility to do uh, facial recognition. Uh, however, I've currently got it set to perimeter protection. Uh, so you can only engage the engine to do one thing at any one time. Once that's done, I go to smart event settings, go down to perimeter protection. And then on the first one here, my conventional IP camera, line cross has been enabled. It's turned on as we can see there. Line cross is put uh, uh, across there at the minute with my dog sat in the way. Uh, the target detection set to human. And at the top, you'll notice it says enable AI by device. So if it's a, a conventional IP camera or the camera doesn't have the facility to do false line reduction, you need to enable the AI by device. This is essentially telling uh, uh, the NVR to do the working out. Is it a human and or a vehicle? So, so the, the, the NVR is, is the brains behind this at the moment. So that's currently on there, that's currently enabled. The arm is scheduled set to 24 seven, which is fine for today's purpose. Uh, and I've got the NVR to uh, beep when it detects a line crossing detection uh, and it to actually trigger the recording on there. Now, if I take a look at the other channel that I've got on here, which is my AccuSense IP camera, the settings are very uh, similar. So again, I've got my enable line crossing detection on there, uh, lines drawn in place. Uh, on this occasion, I've used minimum and maximum size boxes as well. So the uh, yellow box you see there is the minimum size objects. So anything smaller than that box will not trigger. Uh, and then the maximum size box is just there, meaning anything bigger than that box will not trigger. These boxes don't need to be in a specific location. It just acts as a reference point in the scene to give you an idea of target size. Uh, currently it's set to human uh, detection targets. And if you notice above here, the en enable AI by device is turned off. We do not need that feature. That is because the actual IP camera itself is capable to distinguish is it a human and or vehicle in the scene. So it's only going to throw through the events if it's a human body in this situation. Therefore, we don't need the NVR to do anything special uh, with this. Again, arming schedule is set to 24-7 and the linkage action, uh, I've done the same thing. I've got it set to do an audio warning uh, when it detects a, uh, a line crossing and to trigger the recording on uh, channel two. So I'm gonna to go to the live view now. If we look towards the uh, left hand side of the screen, I've got it turned on here to do uh, human body detection. So when it detects human body in the scene, that should then uh, activate and then give us the result on the left hand side. So what we'll do, we'll go and get this triggered uh, now. But again, if we look at this one, it's on the uh, first, on the first channel here. Conventional IP camera triggered on there. But then again, if we look at the actual uh, second channel, which was the actual AccuSense camera, which wasn't using the AI on the NVR, uh, again, we've got the event come through uh, purely because the actual NVR, uh, the IP camera, should I say, was capable of distinguishing that out of person uh, in the scene. If we look at the top right hand corner, we've got the little uh, bell icon there with three indications there. Uh, so if we go to smart event, again, this will show you all the events here, the, the dates and times have been triggered, what the event was, uh, and on what channel they were also triggered on um, as well. Again, likewise, when you go to smart analysis at the top here, you go into human body search. Uh, I'm going to search by event for human body alarm for today's date. Uh, all cameras, again, I've only got two added to this MVR at the minute. If I click on start search, this will show us all the events a human body has been seen uh, in the scene. And again, you can actually click on these uh, and get some more details about these uh, should you wish. So there we go, uh, a, a great uh, bit of kit. Uh, again, this is, is, is ideal solution uh, uh, for people who may currently have conventional IP cameras and a conventional NVR and they're being uh, troubled by uh, false alarms caused by animals, leaves, lights, or other irrelevant objects triggering those line crossings. Uh, rather than have to go in and put in a brand new solution, you can keep the existing IP cameras in there and simply swap out the NVR for our new NVR with AccuSense uh, technology. As you saw though, if the customer does have 
uh, an IP uh, camera that has built-in AccuSense. Uh, again, the camera can carry on doing the actual work itself and therefore it doesn't require the NVR to do the working out. Again, you'd only have to enable that for the conventional uh, IP cameras. If it is an AccuSense IP camera and you enable the AI on the actual NVR itself to do the, uh, to do the false alarm reduction, it doesn't mean double the amount of false alarm reduction. It is just simply one device or the other. So again, we do recommend if it's an AccuSense IP camera, keep the camera doing the work. And therefore, if it, you just use your conventional IP cameras uh, on this device here to actually do the false alarms and target classification. If you don't want any further information on this device, uh, if you click on the link below or scan the QR code, that will take you to our online uh, data sheet. You can read up about the actual device itself. Alternatively, as always, uh, speak to your uh, distributor. They'll be able to give you all the same information as well as any prices associated. Thank you.